Good morning everyone and I hope you are doing well or actually good evening depending on what time and where in the world you are watching this. Um, so I thought I'd give you my morning skincare routine today that literally just gives my skin life, glowingness and healthiness because over the past three days I have been working around 35 hours and I've been doing 11 to 12 hour shifts. I am exhausted. Literally I'm so so tired um, which can definitely tell on my skin. I look like I've been awake for 25 years. I just need really good hydrating, plumping and glowing skincare products. And I have some fantastic ones right here that I'm going to show you in a second. And I also want to take this opportunity to also discuss the Pareto controversy of their Centella Green Level Safe Sun um, Sunscreen. <clears throat> Yes, so we'll talk about that as well. And let's just get into it, because I've just got out of the shower. I've cleansed my face with the Beauty Bay Milky Jelly Cleanser, which is one of my all-time favorite cleansers. It's nearly run, ran out, actually, so I'm very, very sad about it. So first of all, I'm gonna be using the Hylamide Sub-Q Mist. I have absolutely rinsed this bottle. I, so this is my second one. I purchased it um, in the Decium sale, and if the light is telling me correctly, I've used, so I've got that much left. I've still got lots and lots left, but I've been rinsing this because I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite mists ever. So I'm just gonna spritz this on my face. Very quickly while my face is damp, I'm just gonna go in with the Inkylist Hyaluronic Acid just to plump my bags and my tired fine lines away. <laughs> I've also got like a little stress zit there. Can you see it maybe? I don't know. But yeah, I've got a stress zit there, which is not great at all. Already my skin is feeling so much better. So I'm gonna go in with the Vitamin C Brightening Drops by Indeed Labs. So this has got ascorbic acid in there. It's got hyaluronic acid as well. So just really fantastic at providing that, you know, antioxidant um, antioxidants for the day ahead and also just to give my skin that you know brightening and glowing look that I really really need. This is a lovely cut like texture and consistency. So I have their vitamin C24 which is more like a um, moisturizer kind of serum step um, which I just really I'm not a big fan of that just down purely down to the texture and sort of the overall feel it has on my skin personally and the smell of it as well. Um, I rather, I do really prefer a um, vitamin C derivative, so like a scoble glucoside, uh, glucoside, sorry, not glucoside, <laughs> not glucoside. Um, so yeah, I really do sort of prefer vitamin C derivatives um, rather than ascorbic acid, but they've really, like Indeed Labs have absolutely nailed this formula overall, and it's just so elegant and so lightweight, it's just absolutely perfect. So I definitely recommend it if you're looking for a vitamin C serum, but without that, you know, rusty smell and, you know, or a vitamin C in silicon. Apologies for the lighting as well. I know it's kind of a bit dark, but it is such a cloudy day outside and, it's just very dark already and it's not even lunchtime. <laughs> and so if you haven't heard already, then the controversy around the Pareto and their sunscreen product called the Centelic Green Level Safe Unscented Product. And that has a, um, an SPF rating of SPF 50 plus with a PA rating of plus, 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 plus. So that's four pluses, which is the highest PA rating. But I'll get onto that in a second. So. That product is infamous at being cosmetically elegant and the consistency being, you know, dreamy and lightweight and creamy and perfect for all skin types, especially the unscented version anyway, with a really fantastic high protection factor. So, you know, you go on your Instagram or you go on YouTube and you see this sunscreen everywhere, like literally everywhere. So then it's actually come to a shock to all of us that NC Decoder, who is an ingredient spotlight website, have actually carried out tests and scientific tests with other scientists in different labs around the world. Well, not necessarily all around the world, just two, two labs in different parts of the world. 
and they have basically found that the Pareto, because of its low sort of concentrations of the sunscreen ingredients in there, actually has an SPF rating of 19, 19, that's one nine, instead of the labeled SPF, which is a 50 plus. And which to me at first was like WTF. How can we even trust sunscreens, which are probably the most trusted skincare product out there, to protect us from, you know, the very harmful and deadly UV rays? How, how can we trust a brand and trust a sunscreen product when it's labelled incorrectly? And so I wanted to take this moment to not spill the tea or spill the skincare on Pareto or you know anything like that because this isn't like I'm not about that I'm not this channel isn't about that but it's just to give you guys a bit of an opinion from a skincare enthusiasts side of things and where I think we should move forward after this whole controversy and so sunscreens are if not the most regulated skincare products out there on the market and it you know it has different variations across the world so the european union have different regulations in two regards of how to classify and label and also um, kind of produce a sunscreen product rather than the US do and also Asia. And so in the US the FDA actually classifies sunscreen products as over-the-counter drugs because they see it as sort of like you know preventing damage on the skin and preventing skin cancer so they you know they do class it as a drug whereas here in the European Union they class um, sunscreen products as cosmetics and by no means does that sort of determine the expectations or the the higher quality and regulations that European unions have or the US have and um, by no means does it you know sort of mean that a sunscreen product is better in the US or better in Europe it just doesn't mean that whatsoever there's just different regulations um, to the likes than Asia have because Asia have that PA rating which is where you'll find the PA plus to PA plus plus PA++++ or PA++++. And so the PA rating is based on the perception factor against UVA rays. And UVA rays are the, the rays that actually go sort of further into the skin and damages the collagen and the skin cells and, you know, speeds up the, um, the aging process and also, you know, speeds up skin cancer or mutation or whatever. And then you have UVB rays, which actually sort of burn the surface of the skin, which is, you know, your sunburn, and that leads on to mutations and it leads on to skin cancer. And so with that in mind, it's really important to look at sunscreens that have a UVA and also UVB protection, which is also known as a broad spectrum. But in Asia, you'll have your SPF 50 plus with a PA rating. And then the PA rating obviously determines how effective it is against the UVA rates. <laughs> Honestly, I am with you. It is so confusing. I just think, you know, the countries should combine all together and just make one set of rules that we should all follow. <laughs> It'll make life so much easier, but that's just 2020 in a nutshell. <laughs> and so coming from a consumer's point of view, when looking at sunscreen products, you have European sunscreen products, which are, you know have incredible regulations and are formulated very, very well. So like you have La Roche-Posay's and Velios Ultralight, you know, invisible fluid, which is just incredible. Um, but then you have, you know, your Korean, your Asian sunscreen products, with the likes of Pareto, for instance, which has been infamous for their sunscreen. And you kind of look for a product with a high SPF rating, and also in, in Korean sunscreens, you, you look for that PA rating, and four pluses, you think, oh my god, this is, you know, I'm getting such a fantastic product for a cheap, affordable price. But as it comes to light, Insidicoda have actually sort of tested out this Pareto Centella green level sunscreen product. And the, you know, the results are kind of shocking. And what can we actually take from that as consumers, as skincare enthusiasts, and as, you know, I'm not speaking for myself here, but you know, the professionals out there, how can we move forward from this? And how can we digest this information and kind of get our trust back with Pareto and also Korean sunscreen. So what I'll do is I'll just read the statement from Insta Decoder here. 
So, as a cosmetic formulator and entrepreneur, I've started a sunscreen project for a little more than a year ago with the help of one of the top sunscreen formulators in Europe. I consider the examples of the popular, super elegant feeling Korean sunscreens, one of them being the Perito Centella Unscented Sun. Looking at the formula and only seeing two filters, I raised my eyebrows even before I learned that Perito disclosed the unusual low filters amount 3%, Uvinol A and 2% Univol T and that SPF 50 plus is SPF 84.5 according to the brand. So that's incredibly high um, claims and labeling on a sun protection factor. And then he goes on to saying, having doubts, I asked our sunscreen formulator's opinion specifically on the Perito Centella unscented sun and how he thinks it might be possible to achieve SPF 50 plus with the two filters at these low amounts. And then they go on to say that they tested a few products of the Perito sunscreen product with an expiration date of 14th of June 2023. They decanted the products to mask the true identity and to avoid any prejudice bias in the lab and sent in the samples for SPF testing. As the quickest and most cost effective option, we started an in vitro test in the Polish lab, ITA test. It came back as an SPF 15.8 with a standard deviation of 2.3. And to carry out further research and tests, they actually sent the sunscreen product to a German lab called Prodim which actually they tested in vivo with five people and it came back again as an SPF 90 and I think there are definitely a few things to take from this controversy and we first of all we need to actually wait and see and hear more evidence and more tests being carried out to actually back up the claims that the Perito sunscreen product is an SPF rating of 19 because it was only done in two labs so that's you know i know there were a few other tests in those labs but it was only done in two labs and not to say that in city code or anything you know are incorrect or sort of being biased there but we need other unbiased research and tests and opinions to actually back up the claims there so i think before we jump the gun and start cancelling out perito which, you know, we shouldn't be cancelling out Perito because, you know, we're not a cancel society, are we, in this community? And I just think before we start, you know, hating on Perito, like I said, cancelling out Perito, we need more evidence and more research to actually back up these claims before we come to a conclusion and form an opinion basically and sorry to interrupt i just used the drops of softness serum by your skincare video coming on sunday so make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss that out little teaser so yeah going back to the pre tell i think this hiccup shouldn't let you sort of deter like deter you away from sunscreens in general as well because sunscreens are so incredibly important for our skin our skin health our body health and basically our skincare routine overall. If you aren't using a sunscreen, then there's no point doing any other step in your routine. And I also think that we shouldn't let this hiccup change our mindset on Asian sunscreens or sunscreens in general. I definitely am questioning Perito sunscreen products and I'm definitely questioning my beloved comfy water sunblock, which I just absolutely love. Um, of sort of the efficiency of you know of the standards of the protection in that product but i don't want you guys and i know you guys won't do but i don't want you know the community to go into this cancel culture that you see everywhere else because we aren't about that we're a lot nicer than that and um, i really honestly think that we should hear from perito we should wait for new research wait for more extended research to back up the claims and then we can form our opinion and if Perito come out the side of this and say yes absolutely you know we accept total responsibility and we are sorry and then they prove to improve their formulas and make changes I think that's a step in the right direction but definitely questioning it right now However, I don't think we should cancel Perito out. I don't think we should cancel Asian sunscreens out. And I don't think we should cancel using sunscreens in general. I know to get people wearing sunscreens every single day and repeatedly throughout the day is difficult, but we were getting somewhere and I think we should still, you know, continue to step forward and really focus the importance of sunscreen 
and reapplying it every day all the day. <laughs> anyway, speaking of sunscreens, I'm going to finish off my routine using, oh my god, I totally forgot to tell you that I have just used the Stratia Liquid Gold Moisturiser, which is incredible. I absolutely love this moisturiser. So fantastic at strengthening and reinforcing the skin barrier, adding that hydration and smoothing out and really just being a fantastic lightweight moisturiser. Verbal diarrhea, Adam. <laughs> uh, but yes, I'm going to go on with my Altruist um, Face Fluid SPF 50. This is an SPF 50. This is the standard that we all need in a sunscreen. And look at this. Look at that. Sorry, but <laughs> I'm obsessed. <laughs> So I am so overdue a haircut as well, like my little sideburns are going really curly and oh, my eyebrows need trimming, <laughs> oh my god. You know when you just like work so much and you're like literally your life just gets put on hold, you can't do anything, you feel exhausted, that is pretty much me right now but I've got lots of videos to edit today and you know smash out some content so I really do hope you've enjoyed this nice chilled out well hopefully it's been a chilled out and not stressful about talking about Pareto but yeah those are my skincare products I'll link everything in the description box down below I've got a very exciting giveaway for you tomorrow and also the very exciting um, yours skincare video on Sunday which I'd be really appreciative if you checked out because I'm working with them and honestly I wouldn't be working with a brand if I didn't love them and I like you guys are going to love them as well so thank you so so much for watching and I will see you in the next one see you later guys bye bye